How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some eerie and mysterious events that remain unsolved. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy content. Just like this. In 1561, something strange happened in the skies over Germany that has left a lot of historians mystified. This event was a mass sighting of unidentified flying objects over what is present-day Nuremberg. A part of the Holy Roman Empire back when the sighting took place, Nuremberg remains on the radar of UFO enthusiasts centuries later. It was daybreak on April 14. Early risers throughout the city were witnesses to terrifying visions over the sun. First, it took the form of blood-red coloured arcs peppered with black spheres blotting out the sun. What came next was said to be worse. A series of blood-red crosses appeared beside the black globes. The images in the sky all seemed to battle amongst themselves in a torturous upheaval as the people of the city looked on. Finally, the objects all appeared to burn out from exhaustion before falling in the sky with puffs of smoke. Naturally, the people of Nuremberg applied a Christian interpretation to the incident. Many saw the blood-red crosses mixed in with a scene of turmoil and destruction as a call to repentance. However, many other interpretations have been floated around since. Many people believed the globe-like balls mixed with fiery blood-red puffs of smoke were cannons from a nearby military exercise. Others believed that the people of the city were simply applying their overzealous religious beliefs to a particularly red sunrise. Some took it as a sign of an impending apocalypse. Curiously, five years later in Basel, Switzerland, another very similar sighting took place. Over the course of three days, on the 27th, 28th of July and again on the 7th of August, mysterious black shapes were spotted in the sky. First, it was reported that the sun lost its luster, before blood-red tears seemed to form in the sky. On the 7th of August, the black floating balls appeared as though they were embroiled in battle. Some of the balls turned a fiery red colour before extinguishing. Again, through a modern lens, this event can be interpreted a number of ways. The most common explanation is that overly religious witnesses expounded the sighting of a solar eclipse as apocalyptic. During the 16th century, throughout Europe, there was significant conflict between Catholic and Protestant factions during Reformation. It's possible villagers witnessed military conflict without realising what was happening. Still, there's no concrete evidence that explains what witnesses saw in both Switzerland and Germany all those years ago. Strange flying balls in the sky that appeared to be engrossed in battle certainly does pique one's interest. But ultimately, these incidents still remain a complete mystery to this day. Broadcasting at a frequency of 4,625 kHz, an eerie radio station of unknown origin sends a mysterious code out into the airwaves. UVB-76 is a radio station in Russia that no one claims to run. It emits a mysterious buzzing at 25 tones per minute, around the clock, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The exact start date of the station is unknown, but many speculate that it began sometime in the early 1970s. Day after day, it sends cloaked messages intended for an audience that hides in the shadows. The station does occasionally break through with a series of nonsensical words uttered in Russian. In this video from Mr. Dr. Smith Jr., you can sample the bizarre and mysterious buzzing sound that is emitted from the so-called ghost station. People from all around the world tune in to try and make sense of the station, crack the code behind the mysterious messages it's sending, and anticipate what type of potential doom the mysterious messages could be conjuring up. Is it a communication method for spies, a calling card for a secret society, a hoax, or a dead man's switch for nuclear retaliation? Nobody's certain. 
To deepen the mystery, in September 2010, the broadcast broke its monotonous tone to play a short excerpt from Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Take a listen. The theories behind why this station exists are intriguing. A popular one is that the channel's used for Russian military communications. Under this theory, the buzzing sound is merely a placeholder until the channel's needed for more important communications. Another theory that's been thrown around is that the tower that emits the buzzing sound is connected to Russia's missile system. If the signal is interrupted as a result of a nuclear attack, an automatic nuclear retaliation will be triggered. But ultimately, the true nature of this radio broadcast is still unknown. However, when you're trying to sleep tonight, think about this. It's possible that an antique radio station built in the 1970s somewhere in Russia could malfunction and trigger a nuclear war at any given second. Sweet dreams. As the world celebrated the close of 2019, a call went out to the US Coast Guard from Bahamian authorities. A 29-foot Mako Cuddy cabin vessel carrying 20 people on holiday had disappeared while bobbing along in the waves over the Bermuda Triangle on its way back to Lake Worth from Bimini. Rescuers searched an area covering 17,000 square miles for days without turning up any evidence that a boat had been in the area at all. Significant resources were used during the search for the boat, including HC-144 Ocean Sentry aircrew from Miami and a C-130 Hercules aircrew from Clearwater. The US Air Force, Coast Guard, as well as the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and the Bahamas Air Sea Rescue Association and Patrick Air Force Base units were deployed in the search. Despite such a significant search and rescue contingent, no evidence was found on the whereabouts of the boat. Ultimately, on the Friday morning, after more than 84 hours, the search was called off. The fate of all 20 people on the vessel is now one more mystery that's been swallowed up by the Bermuda Triangle. The infamous history of the Bermuda Triangle, or the Devil's Triangle as it's sometimes referred to, began in the early 1950s, when several journalists reported strange disappearances in the area. The first noteworthy disappearance happened five years earlier on December 5, 1945. Flight 19 consisted of five TBM Avenger bombers participating in an overwater navigation training exercise. All 14 airmen participating in the training disappeared without a trace. To make the event even more bizarre, a 13-man crew was dispatched from Naval Air Station Banana River to search for the missing Flight 19. The search party also mysteriously disappeared while looking for the original missing crew. An eerie message from the doomed Flight 19 was later released to the public. Over the radio, the flight leader was heard saying, We're entering white water, nothing seems right. We don't know where we are, the water is green, no white. This was followed by radio silence. Over the years, more than 30 disappearances have occurred in this notorious stretch of water. Numerous explanations have been put forth trying to explain the bizarre occurrences. Everything from compass variations and dangerous currents to wild weather and human error have been suggested. It should be noted that the official word from the US Navy and US Coast Guard is that no supernatural activity is responsible for causing disasters and disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. Did Dr. Mary Neal really go to heaven? An orthopedic spine surgeon, Neal certainly seems believable as a woman of science and logic. However, her claims require faith in the unknown if they are to be believed. The good doctor was kayaking while on holiday in Chile in 1999, when her kayak pinned her at the bottom of a waterfall for 12 full minutes. When medical aid arrived, the ice-cold body of the doctor had no heartbeat or breath, Ultimately, she was without oxygen for a total of 24 minutes. 
Amazingly, Dr. Neil was revived without any long-term damage to her brain or body. While she was unconscious, Dr. Neil claims that she arrived in a place full of structures where spirits roamed. Overjoyed to see her, these beings were focused on nurturing and protecting her. They informed her that she needed to return to her body because she had more work to do. This place was allegedly so comforting and magnificent that Dr. Neil protested returning back to the living. Finally, the beings gently guided her down the path to be reunited with her body. However, they delivered a message to her before she should go. The beings informed her that she would suffer the great tragedy of losing her eldest son. It was a piece of knowledge that Dr. Neil tried to shake off after she returned to her life. For a decade, she kept the secret to herself out of fear of upsetting her husband and children. However, she received a phone call 10 years after her spiritual experience in Chile, informing her that her son had been killed in a car accident caused by a distracted driver. Neil claims she received the news of her son's death the day she finished her memoir. While Arkansas may be known as the natural state, an alleged supernatural happening has drawn a lot of attention. The situation became so serious that the Arkansas National Guard was asked to step in to confirm whether or not the soil in a small town called Midway was being used as Satan's play sand. As summer 2018 drew to a close, a flaming sulfur emitting hole appeared in the ground near the town of Midway, Arkansas. The two foot hole was shooting flames reaching nine feet high at times. Residents reported sulfur odors as they watched the ground burn up in a perfectly circular shape. Early theories ranged from a deadly gas leak to a portal to hell. Local officials took a more tempered approach by declaring the spontaneous fire circle as definitely man-made. The most plausible explanation was that a person had simply dumped some paint thinner that eventually caught on fire. However, some oddities were discovered when the Arkansas National Guard unit was brought in to use specialized equipment to test the soil inside the hellhole. What the unit concluded was the hole contained high amounts of sulfur dioxide that would not be found in the ground under normal conditions. They also found that the hole went down more than three feet before making a sharp 45 degree turn. The mystery behind why the flaming hole of Midway was created was never solved. However, local enforcement officials are adamant that the hole was man-made. The official conclusion is that the hole was part of a prank. However, no pranksters have ever come forward to take credit for bringing hell to Arkansas. Before we take a look at an eerie statue in Chicago, remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and mysterious videos. Also, an absolutely free way to support the channel is to smash that thumbs up button there. Chicago's Graceland Cemetery is home to one of the creepiest sculptures ever created. A bronze sculpture called Eternal Silence is an eerie work of art with a dark story behind it. Locals often refer to it simply as the Dexter Graves Statue of Death. In 1831, a man named Dexter Graves led 13 families on a voyage to settle Chicago. While Graves passed away in 1884, it would be 75 years before the statue that is forever associated with him would be created. In fact, Graceland Cemetery itself wasn't founded until 16 years after Graves passed away. So how did this settler come to be associated with Chicago's creepiest statue? Dexter had a son named Henry who left behind a sum of money totaling around 300,000 US dollars to create a statue in honor of his father. When Henry died in 1907, instructions were left to create a monument in Washington Park in honor of a racehorse named Ike Cook that was beloved by his father. However, the horse-inspired monument was never actually built. Curiously, the funds were redirected to a statue built by Laredo Taft that featured an eerie hooded figure. The statue has haunted Chicago's Graceland Cemetery since 1909. Standing 10 feet tall, the bronze statue draws clear comparisons to the Grim Reaper. The statue has become something of a grotesque tourist attraction in recent years. 
According to folklore, anyone who looks into the eyes of the hooded bronze figure upon entering the Chicago Cemetery will see a vision of their own death. There have even been reports that the statue's arms move throughout the day, often in such a subtle way that passers-by would never notice. At night time, witnesses say that eerie screams can be heard in the vicinity of the statue. Up until the 1970s, a pernicious rumour suggested that the statue wouldn't show up in photographs, adding to its mysterious lore. This theory has obviously been disproven, but it adds another layer of intrigue to the already eerie statue. So is this statue in Chicago's Graceland Cemetery really haunted, or is it just a case of an intricate layering of urban legend? One way to find out for sure is to stare deep into the black veil of the statue and wait for a vision of your own demise. If you want to see some more eerie historical events, then check out that link on the top there. Otherwise, this playlist here is chock full of mysteries for you to enjoy. Leave us a comment down below or follow our other socials. There's links in the description box below. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time.